Uh, as Sister Sudama mentioned, this is a very first time we have this uh, jhana retreat in this place. Although I have written several books on jhana, I have not given a jhana retreat as such. In fact, in this country, particularly in the uh, uh, whole of Europe or Western world, since meditation, I must qualify Theravada Buddhist meditation, uh, has been uh, introduced, uh, jhana meditation has been uh, uh, ignored and uh, set aside for one reason or another. For the last almost three decades, Vipassana meditation uh, has been in this, uh, in practice, uh, more and more people become interested in Vipassana meditation. And uh, not very many people uh, showed great interest in practicing jhana. Normally teacher, meditation teachers uh, thought of uh, teaching jhanas. Occasionally very few uh, meditation teachers talk about jhana and uh, occasionally, just very recently, they started uh, giving retreats on jhana. I think uh, we have been uh, uh, waiting too long, and it is actually long overdue, the practice of jhana uh, meditation. I think the reason uh, for not uh, teaching jhana uh, is more than one reason. My belief is that when uh, Vipassana meditation was introduced to the Western world, jhana kind of meditation was in practice. Perhaps uh, Vipassana meditators wanted to be, to be different from other meditation techniques. Uh, and therefore, they straight away started teaching Vipassana meditation. Second reason, I think, uh, is that uh, misunderstanding about tranquility meditation or jhana meditation. That misunderstanding is very gross, unfortunate misunderstanding, not understanding the teachings of the Buddha the whole practice of meditation. That is, uh, when this is not right understanding, the wrong understanding, that wrong or misunderstanding is that uh, when one practices uh, jhana and attains jhana, that person would become very much like a vegetable does not have any uh, vision, insight to liberate oneself from suffering. They think since uh, jhana meditation brings a great deal of bliss, peace, tranquility, quietness, concentration, Meditators become very much tempted to stay with that peace, calm, tranquility state of mind. And that, they think, would be a hindrance to the progress of insight, meditation, to liberate people from suffering. This is the gross misunderstanding. They, seem, they don't seem to, if they have this misunderstanding, uh, they seem to uh, not uh, making the distinction 
between right concentration and wrong concentration, or right jhana and wrong jhana. And in this retreat, I'm, I'm, I want to uh, clarify these uh, misunderstandings. Thirdly, generally, people have fear of meditation, and this fear is uh, more intense whenever they think of uh, jhana meditation. The fear is that when some people practice jhana, they become crazy, and they become they have to be. They will have a sort of mental derangement and have a lot of problems. So, uh, therefore, they don't want to practice or even teach. Uh, jhana, meditation. And next misunderstanding is that uh, one can attain liberation without practicing jhana at all, directly practicing uh, vipassana, they can attain liberation. Or they also think all one needs is just a, a touch of concentration, not a real concentration, just a touch of it as a passing event, passing experience. That is enough to liberate oneself. All these are misunderstandings with regard to jhana meditation. Not, say, not uh, taking into account what the Buddha himself has uh, taught us about jhana meditation. The Buddha, one who practices jhana, is uh, called one who uh, experience Nibbanic bliss here and now. Ditta Dhamma Sukha Vihari. Pali word is Ditta Dhamma Sukha Vihari. One who lives happily this very life. Ditta Dhamma means this very life. Sukha Vihari, living happily. These are the Buddha's own words. Wherever we read uh, any Pali discourse that Buddha delivered on meditation, in those discourses he has uh, not failed to mention the practice of concentration or jhana. I said that every day in our retreat, in our meditation sessions, morning or evening, nati jhanang apanyasa panya nati ajayatu yammi jhanang cha panya cha saveni santike. To make it easy for people to understand, I you I translated. I have translated it as uh, there is no meditation without wisdom no wisdom without meditation. One who has both wisdom and meditation is close to peace and emancipation. Here, the word jhana I have translated as meditation because that is the general meaning of jhana. <coughs> but what jhana really means is this very practice. Panya is wisdom. That means without jhana there is no wisdom, no wisdom without jhana. <laughs> it is, there is no wisdom without jhana, no, wis, no jhana without wisdom. That's what it means. No jhana without wisdom, no wisdom without jhana. 
So you can see how closely these two practices are related. These are inseparable practices, that is samatha and vipassana. I will show you during this course the connection, the relationship between tranquility meditation and insight meditation or samatha meditation and vipassana meditation. Or how one gains vipassana from jhana. We have to look into all these areas. And I show you during this uh, course. And also, in order to instill some confidence in you in this practice, I also want to mention where the, the jhana uh, and how important jhana is in the Buddha's teaching. You remember the Noble Eightfold Path divided into three categories. That is, sila, samadhi, panya. Samadhi is concentration. Panya is wisdom. Sila is morality. There is no vipassana category. It doesn't say sila, vipassana, wisdom. It is a sila, samadhi, panya. Samadhi is kusala chitta sekagata samadhi. Wholesome one pointedness of mind is called samadhi, concentration. Wholesome one pointedness of mind is achieved, gained from. Jhana. Wholesome one pointedness is the, the, the goal of Jhana. Also, sometimes I forgot one uh, uh, misunderstanding <laughs> that is, uh, uh, some people say, you can gain concentration, concentration, but not one-pointedness. <coughs> how, how on earth can you say something, can you call something concentrated, concentered or concentrated without having one-pointedness? The very word concenter, one center. Concenter means one center. You learn it in geometry. There has to be one center for everything to come and join. That training, that practice is concentrated technique, meditation. Everything has only one point one center. And therefore to say that one-pointedness concentration is not what the Buddha taught is completely misrepresenting the Buddha's teaching. And Buddha said that concentration concentrated mind sees things as they really are. These are Buddha's own words. Samahitang chittang yathabhutang pajanati. Concentrated mind sees things as they really are. What do we do in vipassana? In vipassana we train the mind to see things as they really are. If we want to see things as they really are, we have to have concentration, as Buddha said, concentrated mind. It is the concentrated mind that sees things as they really are. 
And that is what we are trying to do when we practice vipassana. So how can we practice vipassana without concentration? Not possible. It never happens. And therefore you will never see things as they really are. So, because of this importance of um, the practice of tranquility meditation, we want to have this retreat. Tranquility doesn't simply mean sim- just uh, becoming uh, quiet and peaceful and having you know, just blissful experience without concentration. The blissful experience comes only when the mind is concentrated, it uh, keeps off everything. It doesn't pay attention to anything else. It simply keeps focused on the mind. Everything else will be simply slided away. Everything will be simply uh, ignored. And that is the kind of concentration you, we all need to see things as they really are. And therefore, during this retreat, we try to get that kind of concentration. You all can get it. You all can get jhana, uh, at least tomorrow onward I'll talk. And during this retreat we do three things. One, we do many things. Uh, but um, the directions that I try to follow would have only three aspects. One, every session we start with metta, loving friendliness meditation, absolutely necessary for practicing concentration, for gaining concentration, to practice jhana. Second, I, uh, I, I don't uh, want you to read with me or recite metta with me. You just listen. Listen and don't try to verbalize. Listen to what I say on metta. and you calmly, quietly, with the focused, concentrated mind, listen to what I say. And that way I will bring you to a certain level and then introduce the jhana jhana practice. This is how I guide jhana retreat. Thirdly, I show you how vipassana is incorporated into the practice of jhana. And we don't try to make these two separate, poles apart, different entities. We want to bring these two together as a whole, complete system uh, for us to practice without any hesitation and see how these two are complementary to each other, not contradictory. Uh, Whether you are walking, sitting, standing, lying down, you can practice this. However, I would recommend strongly, if you want to gain deep concentration, attain jhana, try to do it in sitting. 
while walking, while the body is moving, uh, you cannot gain the kind of concentration required to attain jhanas. And also when you have questions during interviews, please make sure all your questions are related to jhana practice. Because this is a special retreat. Don't bring up all other questions to during the interview and make very specific jhani question jhani questions. Wherever you don't understand certain things, uh, bring them to at, at the personal interviews. <coughs> 